Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Lamars. I need to get some background music here. I didn't realize that until I started the stream. But. As I was getting ready to start the stream up, I actually saw an update post by the Korean Latell YouTube. And Korean Latell YouTube seems like the developers have made a 2022 recap video as well as a roadmap for 2023 and probably just Latell moving forward. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So I want to go ahead and take a look at that over oh, oh, here. Hopefully this background music isn't too loud. It's about as low as I can get it. But all right. Yeah, I do not speak Korean. So I'm using the translate feature here to assist as well as the translate caption feature or caption translate feature. And then I'm also using Google Translate to translate these timestamps that someone luckily put in the chat for us. So that's great because if they didn't put these here, I probably would not be watching this video at all. But let's go ahead and get into it. So it seems like they're starting off talking about uh, the broadcasting. Oh, this is the timeline for the actual broadcast of things they're going to talk about throughout the video. Uh, unfortunately, I can't read that. But they get into this year's patch content, so the things that happened in the last year. And hopefully me talking over him. Well, I guess I might as well just mute him, considering probably can't comprehend what he's saying anyway. But start of the year off, January 26th with the rainy update. Then they dropped a NUMA update, which we just got in September, six months later or kind of six months later then after the numa update they drops the i island update which we're getting tomorrow uh, in june and then it was the gatekeeper update which came out in july so by that logic we should be getting gatekeeper uh, mid january and then the next update they drop is called orcarium the new area What's up, Cap? What's going on, my brother? The next update was the Orcarium update, which they got on October 19th. So, I mean, we'll get that in about, uh, what's that? Like, let's see, November, December. And this is weird. Normally there isn't an update in October. So they actually dropped this update, I wanna say a month late. From their normal schedule but either way we get things six months later we may get this a month later earlier so we should get this what november december january february march april april at the latest probably march at the earliest or late february at the earliest and okay next they start talking about where is he at 33 20. oh he's just going through all the updates right and then some other patch notes let's see what he's talking about here what's going on grinding one second let me go ahead and pause the stream everybody take a moment um, to acknowledge the god that has just walked into the room uh, all hell of the little god grinding it's a pleasure to have you as well as the man the myth the legend captain falcon but all right so they're talking about other patch notes of just things that happened in the last year. I guess. Legend skip coupons was a big thing. The essence of resurrection was added. I don't know what that is. And that could be a poor translation. Oh, it lets you resurrect more quickly. I'm guessing that's this feather. This feather was added. Conditions for using the legend skill ski gun was removed. I don't, that's a poor translation, but it seems like they probably changed 
some kind of condition for using the legend skip coupons so I'm, I'm guessing the condition is the condition where you have to complete the legend skip coupon quest one time on the account to use them i'm guessing they got rid of that condition Uh, just just to give a a heads up to anyone who's who will be interested later on there is a part in here where they talk about um some major changes coming to the game i saw earlier and that's not like oh yeah i might as well just record this or stream it because it's worth talking about and probably clipping up making a video the fashion item destruction They added a fashion item destruction fu function to the game. What's that all about? This all happened in the last year for them, so we should be getting it soon. Improvements to the chat chat window. That were not introduced through the updates, so it just happened in the background. They changed the difficulty of the second stage of the triathlon weekly dungeon in November. So that's pretty good. Which is the, uh, that's the, the stage where you're climbing up Megart or Bifrost, whatever it's called. All right, what's next here? What are they talking about? This is survey and customization update. And then status of participating players in the survey. Not really not interested in some of this. This is a survey about which cosmetic items are popular. Uh, I guess what are popular things in, this, in their server. So let's see. Probably not just cosmetic items though. There were more male players in Korean Latel in the last year. More male characters. The most played job was Blade Master, as expected. And at the highest level, it was 4001. I don't know what they mean by that. I saw this earlier as well. I can figure out what they meant. But this was the highest level achieved. I'm not sure what that means at all. Fourth place was the new instant dungeon. Third place, new scenario. Second place event is Twisted Dow. Don't know what they're talking about here. The following results of the gatekeeper update. Not really sure what this is about either. Not that important. Where are we at? 4620. New job trends for gatekeeper. Not that interested in that. User expectations. What's that all about? Looking forward to what improvements or patches users would like to see. So this is, this must be user uh, Korean Latel player suggestions. This is what Korean Latel players have suggested the most in the last year. Existing job renewals were the most common, so uh, making probably making some of the worst classes better. Since there are so many jobs in Latel, a total of three jobs have been released. There may have been stress in that aspect. Not sure what they're talking about right here. Oh, it looks like the number one recommendation for decoration content is that people in Korean Latel want weapon skins. So, let's see what they say. So people want we weapon skins, and apparently in the, he said in the chat, in their live chat that was going on during this broadcast, uh, people kept asking for the weapon skins as well. And I muted the live chat because I can't translate that as fast as I can translate the stuff down here. Um, but I'm guessing that's what, what was going on there. There's no specific part of it yet, but there's some opinions about 
Okay, so they're saying that Actos is talking about the weapon skin implementation to the game, but they don't have any idea yet. They have some op opinions about it, so they're talking about it. So we, we could see weapon skins come to the game next year. It's possible. It is actually being discussed now. We know that as a fact. They're, they're discussing whether or not to use existing weapons in the game as skins or whether or not to add a fashion tab for weapon skins. I feel like using existing weapons as skins would be easier just because I'm like, I'm impatient. I feel, I feel like they could get that into the game way faster where you can just wear any we weapon you want instead of having to actually go make some kind of new fashion weapon and then, you know, I feel like that's a lot of work for them, especially when they have to keep redoing skills and whatnot. He's listening to opinions through the live chat. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. So it's like live player feedback. All right, we're at 4931. Weapon skill opinions. Global decoration trends. Republic of Korea. Not sure what all that is. Female hairstyles. Female face shapes, male hairstyle. I'll take a look at the hairstyle stuff real quick just to see if they're showing any. Oh, this is a survey of the most popular hairstyles for female characters in Korean Latel, and that's the worst. It got the least usage. Here's the most popular Korean uh, female face selections in Korean Latel. I wonder how they get this information. Are they just looking at it through some kind of GM tool? Here are the most popular male hairstyles in Korean Latel. Here's the worst, the, the Wolverine hair, of course. No one uses that shit. And there's the most popular faces. Worst, the big googly eyes. All right, what's this, 55, 54, 45, 54, 45, we're right around here. Taiwan, Japan, North America. Oh, what is he saying about North America? Decorating trends. Hold on, what is he saying about uh, North America right here? What's going on here? Taiwan, Japan, North America. I just want to see the the word North America come up as being translated by the the CC. Oh wow, they have the they have the data for the the most popular cosmetics for our server too. No way. Hold up. Next is global. It's the part you've been curious about. Hold on. That was Taiwan, Japan, North America. So we, we have confirmation that the other Latel servers that exist now, there's Korean Latel, Taiwan Latel, J Japanese Latel, and North American Latel. I was curious about this yesterday because I was bringing up... Um, I was talking about like other Latels and I was wondering if Chinese Latel existed. So now we know there are four Latel servers in the world. Nice. I think the translation messes up sometimes if I, if I pause when he's me talking, maybe. Because sometimes they'll talk and it just skips over what he said completely. Like it doesn't pick it up at all. So in North America, this is our most popular hair, and it's also the most popular hair in Taiwan as well. Wow. I remember that I didn't have a high preference, but there was a part that was surprisingly be high. So right now, I'm Korean Latel, which is the 
um, base server or the developer server for Latel. They're doing a 2022 recap and they're also going over some future changes for the game. And so they're right now they're talking about the most popular cosmetics in the last year for the Taiwan server, the Japanese server, and the North American server, which is our server. What's up, Cornbread? Future changes as well as a recap of the last year in general. But I did not expect them to talk about the North American server at all. So it looks like they do pay attention to their other servers. Okay, I'm gonna have to type this into the chat and just say check pin. Uh, so, so some notable things that have come up already. They've talked about they're working on weapon skins coming out next year. And what was the other thing they were talking about? Weapon skins and some class re reworks. But I mean, class reworks are always being worked on, so that's not really that big of a deal. What was the third one though? They said weapon skins, class reworks, and what is this? Hold on, female hairstyle. Weapon skin opinion, then he just jumped straight into this hair stuff. He never talked about. He never talked about what this third expectation was or what whatnot. Right, let's go back. Let's see what they're talking about here. Is he talking about the most popular styles for certain coupons? The maintenance is tomorrow. It's already been confirmed. They sent out the uh, notice. It looks like Taiwan Latel and North American Latel have similar interests in cosmetics. Let's see if it goes to male styles. Oh, look at that. That sounds about right. In North America, these are the this is the most popular cosmetics. The chilled eyes, the color red, and then this hairstyle. And that's definitely true. I definitely see not necessarily this combination, but definitely these cosmetics are very consistent in North America. For sure. That's super accurate. I wish he showed the most common like clothing pieces too. And then he's saying for this coupon, that's the most popular here in eye type. All right, what's next? Next, they're gonna talk about Tanaka's vocal limitation. I may not be able to figure out what they're what that is, so we'll skip it. He's also talking to a, a YouTube chat, a live chat. So there's that. Let's go to the next section. Update schedule. So this is the update schedule for the upcoming year. Okay, yeah, bet. So 2023 update schedule. So the first one is a winter. Let's see. Update. Please note that some things may change. Oh, is that the upcoming boss? The first teaser was released today. Oh, they released a new teaser? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I didn't know they dropped the teaser. Oh, they did. Look at that. I probably could have just gone to the YouTube channel. Okay, that's a very simple teaser. I guess it's not going to show much else since it is just a teaser. We'll see what he's saying. 
Look at that. What is what is that? Imagine if we had a class like that. Imagine if we had a class that holds a gun and a shield. That shit kind of fire. Really? Ruiz, you, you speak Korean? If you speak Korean, let me know now and I can unmute this video and you can translate. A boss monster named Merlin. It's a wolf from a distance. This man said he'd like to see what skills he has, like he doesn't know. Oh, okay. He's going to show us. That's his translation. He throws his shield like a boomerang and shoots a gun. That's, that seems a little counterproductive, but all right. <laughs> Why does he throw the shield and shoot and then shoot the gun? And the gun has less range than the boomer, uh, the shield, if not the same range. Now let's speed this up, man. And this is the second boss or the mini boss. He's wearing, she's wearing the um, the purgatory helmet. Is he gonna show any gameplay? Nope. Okay, there he is. In theory, this should be... What dungeon should this be? This should be an accessory dungeon, shouldn't it? I feel like this should be the next accessory dungeon. It doesn't say down here. New monster. New item. Oh, let's go back to that new monster section real quick. Okay, now that's, that's just the boss we were just looking at. It's a new totem. Hold on, I'm going back so he can talk. All right. If items will be released, the totem is the next version. So a new totem is coming out. That was pretty quick. I feel like that's way too quick. Oh, it's new totem and accessories. So this... Those bosses we just saw are connected to the new totem and the new accessories. I feel like that totem is coming out way too early. We just got a totem, didn't we? Like, we just got a totem in the summer. Oh, they're getting this on December 21st. So the new accessory dungeon is coming out. Even though they said they have a new update schedule, this is really only a couple weeks back from the other old schedule as of right now. So they're getting their new accessory dungeon on December 21st. Ironically, the day I'll be leaving for my trip. And that means we'll get this update in the summer. So this is our next summer update. Oh, it was only like seven runs, really? I'm still playing on easy, bro. I've been like 30 runs in now and I still don't have it maxed out. Oh, what is he talking about? Hold on. This is 104.55. They're talking about system changes that are coming up. Okay, system changes. It's the winter update preview system part. I think it can be done. You can see the summons. Hold up. The Phantom Mage and Iris. Okay, so, okay, hold on. Hold on, we're getting a new summon. We're getting a new summon. We're getting some changes to Phantom Mage. And I don't know what he means by Iris. Is this coming in December 21st as well, I wonder? First of all, the summons have become stronger. Oh, they buff summons. Summon Awakening. Oh, let's go. Summons have Awakening. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yo, that's one thing I like about Actos, bro. Actos is really good at making shit up like like seriously if you look at the history of latel if you go back to 2007 or 8 whenever it came to ogp and you look at latel now there's no way you could have predicted the stuff that's currently in the game being in the game they just make shit up bro and i i, I like that like their 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 mindset and approach to fantasy is really great in creating things Summon Awakening, though. It's a summon that awakens an existing summon and becomes more powerful. It was added to family members in hunting more strongly when hunting. Da -da -da. Poor translation.
raw class. I'm probably going to clip this stream and uh, make a video out of this. Pretty cool stuff. Hold on. The EXP gain from... From what? Damn, bro. I need a Korean translator. Because the sentences are chopping up. Wait, wait. The quest reward is not reflected. What does that mean? The amount of EXP gained by the character is also not reflected. What does that mean? I can't follow what he meant there. I'm, I'm guessing... I'm guessing he's saying the summonable... I'll take a guess here. He's saying... When you level up the summonable awakening system... It does not get EXP from killing monsters or doing quest reward related EXP gains. Which, I mean, I don't know why he think that we think that anyway, considering summonables have always leveled up through their own system. So it seems like summonables are going to level up on their own system as well. Hold on. What do you say about item awakening? He said there's a reorganization of the item awakening. What does that mean? He's, he's, he says he's, he can't remember how Item Awakening works now. So they're changing the Item Awakening system. Even though this CC is very slow, at least we can literally translate Korean to English to some extent. Alright, so that second one has something to do with Item Awakening. But the warehouse, or strengthening the exchange enchantment, this part is a bit difficult. So I think you can refer to this point. Next, I don't think it's actually a system. Okay, so something about Item Awakening, something about the warehouse in there. For that second point and for the third one he said he doesn't think it's actually a system so might skip this let me go check down here to see if this guy says what this stuff is so yeah 105 summon awakening was added 106 item awakening reorganization and then 107 where we are right now is the baldrick superman released oh they're dropping the new champ they're dropping the new champ this last point right here they're drop, uh, dropping a new champion i don't know why i can't talk to that A new champ is finally coming out. The one that they teased a whole year ago. And they're finally actually going to drop it. Well, no, more than a year ago, actually. So, Baldrick Champion is coming out. I don't know if it's coming out on the 21st, but it is coming out. They have a plan to come out. When when they use the word Superman, they're referring to champions. Su uh, Superman means champions for them. He said Baldrick. Baldrick is the name of the NPC. So, it's, it's going to be that fire champion. Tattoo. What's tattoo? I don't know what's that. I could definitely guess it's crit though. Sure. But the fire champ is dropping. Can I get some translation? Oh, I turned it off. <laughs> oh, snap. Hold up. I turned it off on accident. I'm like, what are you talking about? Come on, translator. The January update. Baldrick number three will be introduced in the December update. So there's a there is a January update coming out and a December update they're getting, okay? So December twenty first, we're December twenty first, we're about to see a lot of stuff. We're Korean let's tell. Nice. The tattoo is Bendy. Bendy's name has been changed to tattoo. Oh, okay. So they removed. So Bendy's are now tattoos. Okay. I kept wondering why I kept seeing tattoo down here. So they're changing Bendy's to tattoos. Hmm. Nice. 
I wonder if that means they're going to get rid of that old bendy style and make it like an actual tattoo style. Okay. Wow. So they're changing bendies to tattoos. Cool. Okay, what's this? Hold up. 108. 108.45. We're at Winter Burning Event. Don't really care. Unless they change it. Let's see if they change it. Oh, wow. Burning 5,000? What the hell? Yo, what? Burning 5,000? Yo, that's that's crazy. That's actually crazy. They're dropping the Burning 5,000? No way. Hold on. Let me, let me read this. That's Bro, that's a big jump. They just had Burning 2,500. Damn. Burning 5K. That's crazy. I'm def I definitely got to get the level cap. Bro, we're definitely going to have a full 100 people who are level cap by this time next year for sure. That's crazy. Ultra Burning 2.0. It's 365 days a year. Oh, <laughs> They're dropping burning five thousand, and it's it's three sixty five days now. It's no more, it's no more three months. That's insane. That's insane. Oh wait, wait, wait. Okay, so the three sixty five one it says it's only up to burning three thousand, and then it says the burning five thousand is limited to the end event. Okay, that's interesting. Not sure why they decided to do it like that. But still, burning. Burning to 3,000. 365. That should at least help us a lot when it comes to getting new players in. Because when new players, when they come on the stream or whatnot, it's like, hey, yes, the burning event is always out, bro. Go ahead and play. Hop in. A lot has been added. Hold on. Let me check and see what they're talking about down here. This is still the winter burning event section. When he says family members, he's referring to people who play the game in Korea. He keeps saying family members. Okay, so normally we get the burning box at level one and we get the ascension box at level one as well. Now there will be another burning box for level 1500. Interesting. And it comes with another set of quests. Interesting. Let's get through some of this. Quest is divided into A, B, C, D. Don't know what that means. Ultra jumping potion is also supported. What's that? Probably just the the dragon potion whatever they call it oh look at that burning goes up to 3000 so this is the one that's going to be year round but there's a burning 5000 somewhere on the horizon as well but it doesn't look like he talks about burning 5000 in his post just burning 3000 so burning 3000 is probably coming first as a universal system but the dragon exp pot runs all the way to 3000 so that's pretty great Looks like it has the exact same stats as the other dragon pot, though. Based off of these symbols. Alright, bro. Let's get out of this section. What's this? What's next? 2023 improvements plan. Okay, let's go. This is what this is why I really decided to do this for. Here are the improvement plans for 2023. Even though they already kind of discussed some of that. They said... Or, no, they discussed the suggestions for 2023, not the actual improvements plan. So they said some large changes are coming in 2023. Hurry this shit up, bro. All right, three categories of large changes. First, there's an improvement in the cast item. What is the improvement? What is the cast item? Improved, oh, improved quest items. 
Next is the guild search system. And then next would be the monster encyclopedia acquisition method reorganization. So they're changing. They're improving quest items. I wonder if that means improve the EXP. They're improving the guild search system. And then they're changing the illustration book. Somehow. Oh, they're talking about the events. They're talking about the event tab. When you pick up, when you loot a lot of event items, like quest items, how it's inconvenient. So they're improving that. When the quest is completed, all the items you have will be retrieved. Oh, so instead of like, you know, when you sometimes you loot a bunch of extra items when you do quests, they're actually going to take everything out of your inventory. Instead of letting that stuff linger and you're, be, and you know, sometimes you're confused about what is what and why it's in your inventory. No leftovers. That's nice. The guild search system. Oh, so you can. You can advertise the guilds through billboards and there will be a guild billboard in the game. It's really just crazy that this many years after the game has was created that they're still getting updates. That's really insane. So they're they're making the guild search features better in the game. Okay, illustration book, monster index. In a similar vein. So they're saying it's inconvenient that you continue to acquire monster encyclopedia items after you've already activated it. Uh, John Dare, that burning 5k thing, have no idea because they didn't mention it. They didn't mention it in the event post that they showed. He just mentioned it as like an overall concept or like a future event. But I think everything he talked about in that section was for the January update. Because he went over the December update already, which is the accessories, the new champions, I think the summonable awakening system. There was the hassle of selling it. What are you talking about? Oh, they're changing, they're changing monster encyclopedia. So that you no longer have to pick up the damn cards. Instead, when you kill monsters, there's going to be a probability that you get them in the illustration book. Wow. How did they not already have that in the game? That's actually such a simple idea. Because what is the point of the cards? It's not like people are going to pick up the card up and say, I don't, I don't want to activate this. And you can't trade the cards either. So honestly, why were they ever cards? Yeah, probably kill a certain amount. Yeah, you're right. He said, even though they've only considered these three things right now, they're still considering other things. Depending on what the the players in Korea want. Speaking in a situation that has been confirmed. So he said this stuff isn't confirmed yet, but these are the things that they're planning on working on for the next year. So what was that again? They're cleaning up, picking up too much trash inventory, uh, event loot. They're cleaning up, they're making the better guild search system, which doesn't really affect us as much, but maybe it will for like new players. And then they're making the illustration book process better. But what's next? All right, we're at 116. Schedule release cycle for 2023 items. Oh, so I mentioned this before in a couple of streams, but they're changing the release cycle, right? 
I, I could break it down, but they actually do break this down. Uh, I saw this part earlier before I started streaming. Okay. Here we go. So he's saying right now, so the system that we currently have, uh, Kareem Latell is switching to this, or they actually have already switched to this. It it used to be we get a new weapon, armor, and accessory dungeon every year in six months, which I, I kind of, I thought I calculated it as a year and, well, never mind, I can't count. Uh, six months is half a year. Yeah, so a year and a half. It used to be a year and a half you get the replacement dungeon. So, you know, uh, we got our accessory dungeon last December, so we'll get the next accessory dungeon in the spring. Uh, we got RG back in June of 2021. We're about to get the new weapon dungeon this December, a year and a half, right? So now it's changing to every two years. So damn. So weapon, armor, and accessory dungeons will release every two years. That makes me wonder how hard it must be to actually upgrade that new weapon dungeon. Because they're not getting another weapon dungeon for two years. They just got the new one they got in June. So they won't see another weapon dungeon until June 2024. Sheesh. That's crazy. Or wait. Hold on. What are you saying here? They're talking about the other items, but the translation isn't picking it up. Because I can already see right here, based off the symbol, they're saying one year, which is what is the frequency that we get the other gears on. So like the badges, the specials, um, yeah, pretty much everything in a special tab we would get every year. So like... We got gems last um, September. We just got new gems this September. We got the belt dungeon last December. We got the badges and echo last December. And I think that's it. Oh, and we got the necklace and echo last December. Tomorrow we're going to get a new belt dungeon. We're going to get and then the weapon dungeon drops. Uh, a new necklace and it drops two new badges so we got specials every year so they're changing specials to come out they have, it seems like they haven't decided either every year in three months or every year in six months so now specials are coming out a year and a half i wonder what that's all about why are they slowing down so much probably to, to focus on other quality of life things opposed to content i will say though this is really bad for our server because uh, unfortunately a lot of our players who are the funding players and the primary population they play the game around these updates so with these updates being stretched out that means that our players might actually play the game less like we're getting the weapon dungeon this december or tomorrow we won't see another weapon dungeon until december of 2024 jesus so what the weapons we're about to get we'll be playing with these same weapons for the next two years holy shit <laughs> that's actually crazy i don't even like how they look like that like they look all right what did he say about that he said He says there may be changes hold on there may be changes that you do not know about and the item part is small and the equipment item part contains incorrect information i'm not sure sure what's going on here Not sure what he's talking about.
tomorrow surprise event. So they have a surprise event on Korean Let's Hill tomorrow. Nothing to do with us. What's this right here, though? This is the 2023 calendar recommendation method. There are one, two, three, four recommendation methods. What does that mean? Not sure what he's talking about. Sounds like they had, they're talking about some kind of event that they had in Korea. The Great Awakening, let's go to that. Next is the Great Awakening. Six thousand days will pass. There are some family members who have already reached six thousand days at the end of twenty twelve, so level six thousand. Something about Latell birthday sign up. Yeah, not sure what they're talking about. Some kind of event. Ranking reorganization. Oh, they're adding awakening level to their website's ranking uh, ranking page. And they're saying, it's funny, I just talked about that in my, that one video I did about the Korean Latell player base a couple weeks ago, or a week ago. He's saying that there's over 600 people who are at level cap. He said the current level of awakening is constantly being added little by little. So they're increasing awakening and they plan to continuously increase the level of awakening. Right now, I know in Korea, the level cap for awakening is 110. So it looks like they have completely transitioned over from ascension levels to awakening level being um, the focus point for leveling up in the game. Okay, 123. Communication time, not sure what that means. Sword saver, renewal notice. Could that mean sword saver is getting reworked? Yep, sword saver is the next target for rework. Talking to the chat, too much going on. Let's see. Opinion on Latell meeting. Not sure what that means. Imitation of Tanaka's voice. What's up, Akio?
don't know what he's talking about all right pretty much done here about let goods not sure what that is talking about server consolidation because they have two servers over there serious server added background not sure what that means but serious server is their second server regarding automatic sorting of items okay hold on they're talking about auto sorting okay so the d developers are working on or talking about auto sorting They're saying there's a sensitive part that comes with, with the security of the game with an auto sorting feature. Okay, so they, they kind of quickly brushed over that. He said it's time to finish the broadcast already. So they, they did bring up, I'm guessing somebody in the chat probably asked about auto sorting or automatic sorting of items. And I mean, it wasn't on the, the roadmap, so if they are talking about it, it's probably not something we should be expecting in the first half of this, uh, next year, at least, because it wasn't on the roadmap at all. But yo, that's a lot of a lot of cool stuff, I guess. Honestly, nothing really surprising. It just seems like they're just consistently updating the game like they have been this last year. And they haven't, they're not stopping with their new, uh, their system implementations and changes. So it's good to know that more quality of life changes are coming as they've been coming in this last year. And we're also getting awakening for summonables, which should give people, should make people play more to get their stats up. And we're getting a new champion, which should make people play more to farm the champ for what it's worth. And then awakening itself will continue to have levels added to it. And for new players, the burning event is being increased in two different ways uh, to 3,000 and then 5,000 with no information on the 5,000 one. And apparently burning 3,000 will become a 365, so it won't turn off. And what were some other notable things? That's all I remember. All right, cool. 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 Somebody in the comments, I had, uh, I translated before I got on stream. They said it's been a while since they've done this. So, interesting. Seems like the devs have been quiet for a while. They're just now speaking up. Laboom. Latell. What is it called? Latell Remastered. Laboom. Latell Remastered. Oh, that's a good question, John. That's actually a pretty good question. Like, are they going to make the new burning items transferable, those gems, in that quest tag thing, Jigger? I really don't even feel like playing like that today, to be honest. I might do one character. Probably because I mentally was not preparing to actually play today. Wasted these festival love potions. What is today? Wednesday? Oh, I got, I got some new anime drops too. They dropped, um, what's that show called? The Eminence and Shadow came out today. I gotta check that out. Gotta catch up to Mob Psycho. I'll probably run. One EXP dungeon rotation. A couple kill quest rotations. And then um call it an early night.
Big bands. Where are you in the rankings? What character? Your character name. Oh yeah, you're right here. Rank 87. Oh wow, she's cosplaying Kagome from Inuyasha. That's actually crazy. That literally is. <laughs> Bow Windstalker is the next major rework coming up. At least for the old classes. And it's a pretty good one. Based off of the videos I've seen. Or the streamer I saw. Yeah, bro. People grinding hard, and when that next set of burnings drop, people are gonna grind harder. We're definitely gonna have, probably not definitely, but we should minimum have 50 people who are level cap by this time next year. Minimum, and possibly at least 100. That's still pretty good for our server, I think. Let me go grind, bro. Can't keep killing my back every day. Get this grind over. Awaken summonables. I need to do my bounty hunter. Reputation. That's just like, it can get the plus 50 now. I'm missing a lot of stats. You can get a lot of damage out of that. And the levels up really fast now. And you can do it twice a day. What am I looking for? I need the Ely farm too. Get that bag. Secure the bag at all costs.
in an alternate universe. I'm playing Trickster Online right now. We're waiting for the update to finish. Having fun with my life. I do want to finish playing Cyberpunk too. I just can't stream that without my computer blowing up. Need to save up some money and get a desktop ASAP. Should make that my next goal, my New Year's resolution. Powerful gaming computer. I don't know if any of you saw, there's a, uh, they dropped a tech headset where you put the headset on and let's say you have like a small laptop or a, la a small computer, you can look it up on Marquise Brownlee HD, but you can wirelessly connect the headset to a small computer device and then when you put the headset on, it's like a VR headset, it projects three screens behind the computer that you're using so if you have like a laptop you put the headset on you can have three extra screens behind your laptop and you can only see them when you have the virtual reality headset on and then you just change the windows on the the main laptop screen with using a windows windows tab button it's you know, like all tab but windows tab it's pretty cool I wonder how that would work for, well, I guess with streaming, it doesn't matter because when you stream, you just select the displays digitally anyway. That's crazy, man. Technology is crazy. You know what you can watch that no one else can see? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. But, you know, that's us gamers talking. People who, uh, the masses who use computers definitely use them to do work. People who code, people who work from home or who just work in general. Like all my work from home jobs require two monitors. And really, I would have benefited from having three for a lot of them because all of the stuff you gotta have pulled up. But imagine if a company like you work for a company and they send you a laptop and then they send you some goggles and uh, a headset and that's it. They can get rid of the, their entire inventory of secondary monitors and cords and all that and they can literally just send you a laptop headset in VR headset so when you go to work you gotta log into cyberspace that's just gonna come with plenty of problems bro people working nine to five people working 12 hour shifts getting migraines when we're in VR headsets all day oh my god I didn't take the quest bro I hate streaming fuck And I went to the wrong dungeon. Exactly, bro. Exactly. You can get you get you a headset, a VR headset, and you can have as many monitors as you want. And you can have your laptop on your lap as you lay in bed. Can't enter anymore today. Yo, am I drunk? When did I go inside of, of Rivera City Hall? And Aurora Garden. And Mysterious Hall. Did I grind on this character last night? I did. Huh. I don't remember doing that. Did the server not reset or something? Huh. That's crazy, bro. I don't remember grinding on this character yesterday. And if I did, why didn't I go inside of Choco Garden twice? Let's see, hold on. Get the Ely Dungeons reset. Yeah, I'm gonna go do Ely Dungeons then. 
I don't remember playing this character last night though, bro. Last night I played... Oh no, last night I played Phantom Mage and I hopped on this, huh? Interesting. Getting old, man. Getting real old, man. Brain not working. Either that or I just don't prioritize my video game life as much as I used to. Used to document everything. I was fully aware I had schedules. I'm going to game like this at this hour. Then I'm going to change up and game like this at this hour. Then I'll reach maximum efficiency in my gaming. Oh, I think they're adding a new Ely dungeon too, aren't they? Or is it just EXP dungeons? Not not tomorrow, but coming up in the future. Cause I know I saw on one of the Korean Latel updates, it said something about a new Ely dungeon or a new dungeon. I think it was the EXP one though. Cause it was a dungeon that had no loot. Today's Wednesday, so that means weekly challenge should be resetting and guild rewards. I wonder how many people are not on the game right now because they're under the impression that the game is having an update. And then they're going to log on at like 12 and then there will be no update. That's tough. We live in a society.
Damn, I just noticed that Korean Latel 2023 roadmap did not say anything about PvP coming back. That's actually crazy. And none of the players in the chat asked about it, apparently, because there wasn't any talking point on the timestamps that said anything about PvP. That's tough. PvP might be gone indefinitely, bro. It might be a wrap for Latel PvP.
Honestly, I don't think I feel like grinding tonight. I'm probably going to make another awakening class. And I feel bad because I know Cat probably wants me to make a <laughs> a Meester, but I want to try something else, like Judgment or something. But I am running out of those legend legend coupons, and I'm not motivated to spend money right now, so I'm probably not going to get any more. I need to choose wisely on what class I awaken next. So I'm definitely not doing that legend skill quest line ever. Not in this lifetime. Enough is enough. I have concluded on that lifestyle. I'll probably make that quiz. Let's go. Speed it up. Hopefully I'm the only person in here. I'm not. Other people play this game. How unfortunate. Which country hosted the 2004 Summer Olympics? Uh, Nicaragua. I wish they gave a prize for third place. Oh, these guys are really going at it up here. Which one of the following words is spelled incorrectly? This might be embarrassing. I can't read. Elegant, silly, baggy, baggage, baggage. She got so much baggage. I like a girl with a lot of baggage. 
when we get into a relationship, don't bring all your baggage. I can't carry all that baggage up the stairs. Baggage. Could you spell that in a sentence? Could you spell that in a sentence? Could you use that in a sentence? <laughs> Could you spell that in a sentence? Imagine being at a spelling bee and you say, can you spell that in a sentence? I need... Uh, 94 more. 94, we can get smart, baby. After all these years, we're only 94 tickets away. It's a long road, but it'll be worth it. What am I about to go do? Let's see, what else we got? Judgment, Sword Dancer, definitely not. Rogue Master. I don't feel like getting that weapon. Rogue Master, do I wanna play Rogue Master? Awakening? I feel like I have some of those Rogue Master legend skills done already. Cause I actually played Rogue Master on this character a couple years ago. Um, but after Awakening dropped, I started actually playing the Windstalker. But this was a Rogue Master. This was my main for a little minute. Even though I never got above level 211 for the most part. But back then it was so much harder to level up. Let's see. Oh, I did most of Legend 1. I guess I can go do all of... I could do this last quest and then use... Nope, that's my last completion ticket for Legend 2. So, whatever class I do, I will have no more Legend 2 completion tickets. But it needs to be worth it. Let's see. Jewel Star, Terra Knight, Demigod, Judgment... Rainia, Maestro, Popstar, Archmage, Psykicker, Blade Master, Savior, Shadow Walker, Archmaster, absolutely not. In Agony. This game needs more classes. I think I'm gonna save that ticket for when Um Gatekeeper, aka Pathfinder, comes out. Yeah, I'll wait till Pathfinder drops. Yeah, definitely. And I don't have to worry about wasting time to get the uh, legend skills done. So what am I gonna do instead? I actually do not feel like grinding. Feeling a little bit burnt. probably do champs I need to do my champs as long as it doesn't give me dungeons that I've already completed sky vibrata Dev Solution, Cynical Iris. All these dungeons are not fun to run, though. <laughs> oh, no. I think... I think I just don't feel like playing. There are no packages currently on sale. Tough. Why didn't they ever make invisible underpants so we can run around in the default draws? I want to wait until I can get these rewards, though. 
But I do kind of want to go lay down. What's up, WWZZXXXXZZWW? Welcome back. Did you try the game out? Or are you still waiting? And unfortunately, the update that I promised would come out today has been delayed to tomorrow, which is not normal for this game. There's no invisible earrings, really? You're right. Wow. That's sad. Hey, look on the bright side, though. They're coming out with tattoos for Bendy's. Face tattoo. <laughs> Face tattoo. What we'll made them come up with a tattoo? For your face. Whoa, where's my elemental stone? Oh, right there. Got a little scary. Got a little spooky over here, man. Probably should lock this. Got way too many Dawn Hammers. Hmm, I probably could try to make some new gems. But for some reason, the game never gives me the red and yellow gems. It only gives me the blue one over and over again. I'm starting to rack up a lot of these. I need to get those gems upgraded for sure. Or at least upgrade my charm. But I haven't made a new charm yet. That's better. Yeah, missing a day, a kill in a dungeon is definitely tough. 100%, I feel you on that. That's some old school struggles right there, man. Back when the legend quest would take a week. And you had to rely on RG just for it to get down to a couple days. RNG, not RG. <laughs> Guess I could do my bounty hunter. So let's go see what Bounty Hunter's talking about today. What's up, Jerome? Everybody likes to come on the stream late at night. When I'm contemplating getting off. Let's do some bounty hunter stuff though. Random content. Let's see. Minos. Can't do that. That's acro coffin. And I already acro coughed that up. You feel me? <laughs> I need slapper. Alright, I'll just move all these scrolls over to a dagger. And just play the character in the thumbnail. Go on a hunt with my treasure hunter. Doesn't get any more cannon than that. Oh, you're off for the rest of the week? The man about to go hard, man. Time to sink some hours of life into Little Online. I feel you. Is it worth playing again? Well, I play the game every day. So if I was to say that it's not worth playing again, I would technically be saying that my life isn't worth living. Maybe you could rephrase that question. Because I can technically only say yes to that question without <laughs> admitting to some kind of like self doom. All right, let's go to Dagger.
Oh wow, that's actually a pretty long period of gameplay. You play for three straight years. The game is way better than it was in 2020, I'll tell you that much. Why did you stop playing after playing for three years straight? That's a long time to play this game straight. I've never played this game for three years straight. I'm on my longest, well, I broke my longest streak in March, which was, I played from June to March last year. And now I've been playing for about two months. It's like my second longest streak ever. And when I was a kid, I played Absolutely sporadically. No streaks at all. Maybe I should play, play a crossbow. Since I'm... The thing about playing crossbow though is that <laughs> if they do rework bow tomorrow i'm gonna be pissed that i just deleted all my skills to put it on crossbow oh my god bro so indecisive let's see guess i'll just play bow Why is that skill not being used twice? Shining arrow and bird honey. That skill is supposed to come out twice. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Which one is bird honey? Bird honey. And then this one is Arrow Boom. It's a cool skill. It's definitely way better when it's fire. All right, let's play some bow. Bow Windstalky. They're reworking Bow Windstalker. The other two weapons are already good. Oh, well, the gamble boxes are still in the game, and everything is definitely still overpriced. All right, let's go to these quests are telling me to go. Reputation. One, two, three, four. In fact, things are considerably more overpriced. Let's go take a look and have a good laugh. Before I do that, let me grab these random quests. Oh no, I can't do random quests because you gotta, you can't transfer the peppers. That's so stupid. You gotta do that on my other character. Go look at the auction house real quick though. Let's see. The most expensive pet you can get right now in the game. Someone's selling a great me for a hundred bill. Granted, uh, they're trolling. But this is the most expensive pet you can get out of a gamble box, which is 45 bill. A good 45 smackaroos. What's the cheapest pet being sold right now? The cheapest pet being sold right now is a syrup pet, which is not worth spending your money on. So let's go down to Honeybee's also not worth your money. So great patchwork lion. So the cheapest pet you can get is 5.4 bill. 
Let's go over to weapons. The most expensive weapon on the market is actually really cheap, but that's only because the weapon dungeon is getting replaced tomorrow. So people are selling their weapons. Well, they can't afford to sell them for 20 bill right now because they're not worth 20 bill. Someone's selling their rogue knife for 13 bill. Which is actually expensive for a dungeon that's getting its uh, gear upgrades and nerf tomorrow. But the armored dungeon gear though. Now the armored dungeon is fresh. And this armored dungeon chest plate, uh, chest plate is being advertised for 95 bill because it has uh, damn near perfect stats on it. And it's probably, it's probably waiting for somebody to give him an offer. So kind of unrealistic. But these boots though, these boots also have damn near perfect stats on them. Not really, but he's selling them for 46 bill. These fallen boots here are being sold for 38 bill. 35 bill 35 bill pretty expensive evil iris let's go kill evil iris where's she at she's in frozen world nah a lot of that stuff is not offers the only ones that are offers are the ones that are over 40 bill the 40 bill items are actually legit i told you i sold a pet for 80 bill but it's a rare pet that you can only get out of the weekly guild reward system and it has like a 0.01% chance of being gotten out the boxes and you can't get that many boxes a week so I was able to sell it for 80 bill there are people in on this game with that amount of money a lot of risky people on the game I mean just alone let's say you're a well or someone who's like me, who's not necessarily well, but has spent a lot of money. And let's say when you Ely farm on a daily basis, you make one bill. Like I made eight, 800 mil right now on I Ely farm a day. If I put some time into my Ely gear though, I can definitely get it up to one bill. 30 days of Ely farming is 30 bill on one character. And then if, you, if I sell some stuff, so I, by default, if I play every day, I'll be making 30 bill a day. Then I sell some stuff, I can make a couple extra bill. Not 30 bill a day, 30 bill a month. Will there be a new burning tomorrow? Nine times out of ten there will be. It is on schedule for a new burning. So you can definitely count on it. Burning usually comes with major updates. And when it doesn't come with a major update, it usually comes the week after because they just forgot to add it. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to forget because it's that time. And this is a pretty big update that's coming out tomorrow. And it'd be kind of dumb if they didn't put burning in it. Crypto usable in MMOs. I think certain certain MMO companies allow crypto transactions, but not all. I got a question when did Latell increase the stat numbers in the game and why do they th think they did plus 2k attack what do you mean by that not sure what you mean by increase the stat numbers like stats increase the more the game progresses because you're getting higher level so higher level has to equate to higher stats and then higher level dungeons have to you know each dungeon has to be stronger than the last I'm trying to figure out why that shot doesn't, that skill doesn't shoot twice. Okay, there it is. Oh, it only shoots twice when it's red. And how the hell do I make it turn red? I think you got like, hit a crit on mobs or something. Oh yeah, what's up, Bezo? 
Basil always dropping in with the big questions. Basil, you make the you missed a uh, big part of the stream at the very beginning of the stream. I was going over so Korean Latel devs Axos they did a a recap of the last year of the game, and then they went over like some trends. They even went over some fashion trends in North America, and then they also did a a roadmap for 2023. And some changes that they have planned. Uh, in my head, I'm planning to clip that up and make it its own video. But, uh, but it's 50-50. I might not do that. Because it's hard to be motivated to make videos these days. When I know they, they don't have like high viewer potential. But I will post this stream after. Either way. But now you see I can have 100k HP. I have 3 million HP on this character. But, but when you say win... Yeah, when you talk about things only being achievable, it's based off of the update you're on. So like, for example, if somebody on this current update, for some reason, had 20 million HP... That would be bizarre because right now in theory people should be saying 20 million hp isn't achievable in our current game because you know the, the game is based off of what's in the game what we have access to there's a significant variety of stat systems in the game dungeons are way higher level there's just more access to, to stats so you know the stats get higher but there's no way anyone should have 20 million hp right now it's possible to get 10 million HP though, but not 20 million. That was my reaction to the trailer. I, I, I actually watched it and responded naturally. <laughs> I was that was that was my actual reaction. That's all I had to say. <laughs> it wasn't that uh, not too much stood out. It was worth commenting on beyond that. Did I even do the right dungeon? Is that not Evil Iris? Oh my god, Evil Iris is in Canyon of Chaos? No, she's not. That's Evil Order. Right? I think this quest is translated poorly. Oh yeah, that's a good point, John. Well, you know, back then you were only getting your stats from your weapon and the little gear you had. Now, stats come from runestone, stats come from reputation, stats come from ascension. Like, look at all these stats over here, just from being level 7,000. You got stats coming from characteristics. You got stats coming from my awakening system. You got stats coming out of the illustration book. If there's even the title section in the illustration book. Um, you have stats coming from summonables when they're summoned. Their stats are coming from way more places than just cubing and enchanting some weapons. Like, if I take off all my gear and only have my weapon on, my stats will be significantly lower. And I can't turn off a lot of these stats. These stats are now uh, part of my account. Stats come from achievement. Stats come from imprint. Stats come from pets. 
These are all passive stats. Then stats also come from pet potentials. Then stats also come from memorial system. I got more than 10k strength and magic with the memorial. Then on top of that, specials tab, there wasn't a specials tab before. Stats come from badges. Stats come from necklace, textbook, sticker, belt, brooch, key, card, compass, after image, handkerchief, pendant, guild insignias. Stats come from gems. Stats come from titles. Stats come from fashion items. You know, stats come from way more things than just your weapon. Yeah, definitely think it overwhelms beginners. System creep slash power creep is a common problem in Korean MMOs. Which is why most of them are dead. Amongst a bunch of other reasons. And there's more systems coming out. There's a battle pass coming out. And there's a constellation system coming out. There's a summonable awakening system coming out. Oh yeah, stats come from champions. Forgot about that. <laughs> stats also come from legend skills. Forgot about that as well. And legend skill too. Stats also come from Ely skills. Need to complete those. Stats come from item skills. Item skill buffs. Stats also come from temporary skills. Yeah, stats come from a lot of places. Stats also come from item buffs. Stats do not just come from weapons. In fact, I can take off all of my gear. Let's see what my stats are when I take off all my gear. So right now with the gear on and these couple buffs, I'm at 940k strength. Um, 3.6 mil HP. Just for as two stats to look at. Let's take off all the gear and see where my stats go to. This is just no gear on at all. Just all those passives that I talked about, all the systems. no gear on at all I have 170k strength and 1 million HP so with no gear on at all I'm stronger than a fresh account at probably 200 and 235. Yeah, the end gamers in Korean Lotel right now have 1.9 million strength or 2 million strength. And we have some end gamers on our server as well that are probably close to that who we'll never see. They hide in the shadows. Oh yeah, stats come from guilds as well. Forgot about that. Can't forget about guilds. Guild stats. The vast majority of the, of the active player base are all underground players. Like, there there are thirty two or thirty one people now that are level cap. You'll you'll probably see one of them or two of them a day. 
And it's the same too. You'll never see the other ones. But they played the game every day. And that's just the people who are level cap. There are people who are way stronger than, than some of the level cap players who haven't hit level cap yet. Or as strong as level cap players. Requiem. DTR. I do not feel like doing it. Tom and Rising Dragon Temple. Yeah, you probably see the ones that just sit in bellows. Oh, you're talking about your guild? Yeah, I know. Your guild leader sits in Bellows a lot. He, he plays, though. You can tell they're playing when you see them and you look at their gear. They, they'll they have the newest gear and probably maxed out very quickly. And they'll all be on for the weapon update. Every single one of them. If you want to see some... If you want to see all the... The gods of Lotel, when there's a new update, just camp outside the the dungeon entrance to the new dungeon, and you'll see them. Because they can't hide; they have to go into the dungeon in front of somebody. The hard part is is seeing them, seeing what channel they're in. Not most of them. Most of them probably don't play in channel one. They either play in channel five, six, or eight. Because there are guilds that only play in channel five and six, and then there's there's like a player base that only plays in channel eight to avoid lag. And then there are a few of them that do play in Channel 1, though. You can you can freely quest in the open world, but those quests are limited. They're, they're daily quests. And they give less EXP than dungeon quests, but I mean they're way faster. But once you go through all of them, you gotta swap characters to do them again. There are no areas to just kill mobs freely though to get EXP now. World mobs, uh, overworld mobs don't give good EXP. But there are some some actual EXP quests for the overworld. I don't play them at all because it's really boring to so one shot mobs like that. And then uh, two is just easier to rotate through the dungeons that give good EXP or give you something else other than quest completion. So either an EXP dungeon or a loot dungeon that, that has kill quests. So you can get both the loot and EXP at the same time. No, I'm doing I'm doing bounty hunter reputation. These scrolls right here. One, two, three, four, five, six scrolls. 
My bounty hunter reputation is currently at level 24. The next level will give me three more attack damage and a hundred more basic stats. It's pretty good. I think the reputation quest gave a little bit of EXP too. Yeah, this character's already awakened. You know a character is awakened when you can see the awakening level. At the bottom right. Dr. SD have not been there in a very long time. Wait, is that Dr. SD? No, that's not the one that's inside of Behemoth. That's the other one at Treasure Island. Yeah, that's in Treasure Cave. Still haven't been here in a long time though. I remember when I was this level. I was I was like when I was near the level to actually do this dungeon back last summer. I was so confused about this dungeon. I had no understanding of it. And this is definitely a new player wall of a dungeon. If you don't have any social groups that you're a part of and you come in this dungeon as a new player, it is very confusing and it's very easy to mess up the quest that you have here. But these days it's pretty easy to skip. Yeah, I spent like an hour in the map with the digging and I didn't realize you had to dig when I was when I first came back to the game last year. I think this is actually the dungeon that got me on the Discord. <laughs> I was like, I gotta go to Discord, figure out what the hell I'm doing. There's a lot of people that came back to the game when I came back last year, though, because of burning. When burning was fairly new. I think that was like the third burning or second burning of that year. Stuff like this does make the game fun though, these unique dungeons. They were doing these unique dungeons for a while, well at least up to 235, then you hit 235 and they started to make them a little bit... 
well not really a little bit but more focused on like large mob groups opposed to like puzzles or unique structures Minos is in Acro Coffin Actually, don't think I want to play bow right now for this. We're going to switch to a good weapon. Behemoth is still in the game. They changed the way it looked a lot, though. And there's a, a boss at the end. I feel like when I was a kid, there was no boss at the end of Behemoth. Or either, maybe it was. I was just a dumb kid, as usual. Yeah, I was a dumb kid then. I had no idea how to get the Dr. Rice. Was it easy to solo back in the day? Or did you have to go with a party for the most part in the early days? Cause he wasn't like on any quest line. It was just some extra content, wasn't it? Oh, nice. What was his purpose? It's like a Ely dungeon? It's where you just kill him and, and sell the loot? Because he's not a part of the story. He's not. There's no quest for him. I don't understand. Honestly, the behemoth as a whole. Like, I, well, honestly, to my memory, it was good EXP to grind at behemoth in the early days before Spooky was out. Because I know you can grind a behemoth at like level 25 or something like that. Or in the in teens. And there was quests for the mobs inside of behemoth. I forgot where you get the quest from though. Maybe it was the NPC at the beginning or something. Or the NPC in Elias. Yeah, it sounds like for EXP. I remember grinding there a lot as a kid, man. Honestly, this game would have, would have gone a completely different route if they never created Spooky Dungeon. Because Spooky Dungeon is kind of what set the tone for dungeons giving EXP. Or like, because like the progression of the game, it had dungeons, but the dungeons were only to get special gear. To get boss, it was considered boss gear. Like it wasn't... It wasn't to get the gear of the game, it was to get special boss gear. It's like you could play the game with normal gear and then you could play the game with boss gear. And you do dungeons for boss gear. But spooky... Wait, I'll, I'll go back on that point. You do dungeons for boss gear and then you still progress through the game in the open world. You know, like, behemoth had value and whatnot. A lot of areas have value. But then once they added spooky in there, now you start skipping content. Because instead of playing the game where you progress by... 
going through you know the world you just go into a party dungeon but it wasn't really a, like a party experience outside of the fact that you just needed other players to do more damage like there was no special bonuses or anything you, you were just in the dungeon with other people skipping the game's content together Because now I think about it, my memories of Behemoth are all my from my first year of playing the game. Once Spooky came out, Behemoth was ignored. Once you get to 30, you just go to Spooky. And I, and honestly, you could enter Spooky at an earlier level. So I think at 25, you can start getting EXP from, from the Spooky mobs. Yeah. Wonder why they started adding that stuff in the game. Because now, like, granted, now the game is only boss gear. Like, gear just pr eventually progressed into being boss gear. Which I'm not necessarily going to say it was inevitable, per se. But, because, you know, boss dungeons have always existed with, with boss gear. But I would say the EXP dungeon or like the grinding experience on the side is what made things funny because I think, you know, there's there's a, a, a hundred reasons why Latel is in the state it's in right now. And I think latency is definitely the number one reason. But in that period, that 2017 period after the transfer, which is another reason, the transfer itself, when we couldn't do anything after we got to like the 200s, like the way progression slowed down so heavily, if they just had the old game system incorporated into post 200 content, we would have been perfectly fine because it'd been like, okay, well, I can't do this Sky Kali stuff to get this quote unquote boss gear or this dungeon gear, or oh, I don't have a party to progress my Sky Kali stuff. But it's okay though, because I can always go to the open world and just continue to play the game. And when I remember when I first my first hiatus that was one of my main mindsets was like my main thought process was like damn this party culture is super toxic but honestly if i could just go grind on my own in the open world i really don't care but that really just wasn't an option it really wasn't an option and then they finally made it like so now you can really you really can play this game up until 235 through the open world alone you definitely can granted you will need to get your boss gear quote unquote at some point but you can just grind up to 235 in the open world quest but you can do that until like 2019 or 2020 that's when they incorporated all these open world quests Party culture didn't become toxic until 2017, or like maybe a year or two before that. I wasn't active a year or two before that, but I know on this server specifically, party culture became very toxic because people would literally say recruiting for Spooky must have 2 mil damage. And that's when everything hit the fan. Not Spooky, Coliseum. Recruiting for Coliseum must have 2 mil damage. Yeah, Vaso's experience is very early on in the game. Back when Latel was a, an amazing game, a very vibrant place. <laughs> there were no complaints in, in the, the time you were playing the game. And when I say the early game Latel was horrible, I'm only comparing it to the ease of access of the current game. But, but if we're talking about the year, right? Let's go back to the year 2008, the year 2009. No, those were clearly amazing years for the game. 1000%. But would I go back to those years in terms of the actual gameplay? Of course not. Yeah, based on those early years, those were the golden ages. Some of the golden ages of Latel. 
And it was just a younger time for gaming. Literally and figuratively. Oh, I haven't seen a bot in a while. That's nice. I have not seen a bot in a while. I haven't seen a bot since my last stream in March. Nice. And it's in the chat. Sexfine.info. All right, my reputation went up by how much? Not that much. What else can I do? I guess I can do champs. Vibrata, Leviathan, Geminis. I'm gonna do champs and probably get off. You just call it early. My own health and uh. Just do some other things with my life for once. <laughs> Tomorrow should be heavy, per se. Let's do these. Fallout Shelter. No, that's not Fallout. That's... Floating Island. Yeah. Yeah, you can do Awakening in one day. Awakening is the greatest system they've ever created <laughs> in a variety of ways. Like most systems they create, they have to revamp because it's inconvenient or it's long. Awakening is perfect, bro. The hard part about Awakening is honestly just the prerequisites. Once you get past the prerequisites, you should be straight. As long as you have the damage. But generally speaking, the prerequisites are seeing if you have the damage. It's all good, Vaso. You really want to hang out virtually? You can always scroll back to the beginning of the stream and pretend like you were there. You, you should, uh, you know, I'm, I'm no one's father here, but with my health background, I will say it is very unhealthy to take naps throughout the day and not sleep overnight. You probably should try to work to fix that, to fix your circadian rhythm. It's like not good for your brain. And then you don't you don't complete your sleep cycles either. There's like three or four sleep cycles your body goes through when you sleep. And if you're not asleep for a certain amount of hours, you don't complete them. So it's like it's like putting bandages on your, you know, when, when we sleep, our body recovers and repairs and rebuilds for the next day. It's like you're putting bandages on your recovery and, and repairing daily. And eventually, it just catches up to you. And I think the minimum hours even get through all the cycles is like somewhere like between six and a half to seven hours something like that it's like i think there's three cycles in there every 90 minutes i think that's what it is they're 90 minute cycles yeah Yeah, it probably feels like it keeps you active, you know? It's like a band-aid. It's like an energy energy drink, right? You're just energy drinking your way through the day. But if you just sleep once, 
and get all the hours at once. You'll just have energy for the whole day. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, John, 1,000%. But if it's not insomnia, though, it's just your, your circadian rhythm, like, you can always reprogram your rhythm, quote-unquote. It's just based off of your habits. Like, if I if I started streaming and going to sleep at 1 o'clock every night, after a while, my body will just adjust to 1 o'clock. So I won't get tired until 1 a.m. every night. But when you take like, in, like infrequent naps or you're, you're napping off of a like there's no schedule to it. Not good for your brain. Oh damn, I didn't do Requiem. I thought I did Requiem earlier. Yeah, I get super sleepy. Or I get tired around like somewhere between that two to four period as well. I just, instead of, I just fight the urge to lay in my bed and just try to do something to keep my attention. Unfortunately, as unhealthy as it is, social media makes it very easy to be distracted from being tired. To get through that period, I, I could just work, but if my job doesn't have anything for me to do, I'm really just sitting around and it just becomes very easy to fall asleep. I do hear you on that. But if I take a nap at four, this stream will definitely go to like two in the morning because I won't get tired again for a while. And that's what an infrequent sleeping schedule looks like. Inconsistent. You just look up circadian rhythm health. Downsides or uh, negatives of sleeping off of a schedule. The effects of poor sleep habits. Anything along those lines. Damn, I do not feel like doing this dungeon, bro. I think that's pretty common for a lot of gamers. When I was playing Littell, when I came back to Littell a year ago, I was playing 8 to 12 hour days. Consistently. That's how I started to progress so fast. Like my first couple of videos on the channel. All those videos were during my 8 to 12 hour day times. But I definitely had no job. Well, I had like a little side job that gave me a little pocket change that I did in the early morning. That's a lot of rotating players in time zones. Man, if I could have made any money as a kid, I would have felt rich too. I had zero bucks as a kid. Definitely could have made money if I applied myself, but I was just so addicted to video games. And the <laughs> the leisure 
the luxury lifestyle of being a kid in my mom's house. All I have to do is chores. But I didn't get paid for it, but... Life was sweet. Probably could have shoveled some snow and made hella money as a kid, honestly. When I lived in Wisconsin. Could have made a lot of money shoveling snow, now that I think about it. If I just charged everybody like 10, 20 bucks. Oh my god, I could have bought so much Astros as a kid. How did I... How did I overlook shoveling snow as a kid? Jesus. Oh, probably because I hated shoveling snow. That's part of the reason I actually moved out of Wisconsin. I can't go back there. I hate snow. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I didn't want to be outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sounds good right now with my my more uh, entrepreneurial mind as an adult. But fuck that. Yeah, as a kid, I definitely hated being outside in the cold. I still hate the cold. But back then, it's like I could play Latell, I could play Rumble Fighter, I could play all these games, or I can go outside in the snow. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stay in the house. I wonder what that would have done to my mind, though, as a kid, if I started hustling for money at an early age. Like, would I have become addicted? But at some point, I would have bought so many Ultimate Game cards that I would have been like, damn, I'm really just blowing this money. I can go buy some drip at the local store. Maybe I can use this money to go on the bus and start traveling the town. How different would life be if I just shovel snow with the neighbors? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. People will jump at that chance. Especially when it's just a couple dollars. Like, now that I'm older, I really realize 10, 20 dollars is nothing. You know how many donation services I get emails from? Or Like, I was on Wikipedia a day or two ago, and they were like, hey, the Wikipedia Foundation is in need of money. Help us so we can continue to share knowledge across the world. And I was like, okay, I can get, donate $2. Like, I, I'm not going to feel that. I'm not even going to notice that I gave it away. And then, you know, there's the amounts of people out there who have multiple streaming services where money's just coming out of their account every month. By the way, I don't have any rent. I don't have expenses, by the way. Uh, I, I know I put that out there. But I live on a campus and I don't have a car. I actually don't have any expenses. So I just get paid. But in general... The amount of people who are, who have subscription services and and whatnot, and um, and money just falls out of their pocket. So of course, giving a kid, especially when you see like a kid too, a kid trying to make an honest, trying to make some honest money. Yeah, this is this is all recent though. I just started working at this job in August. Definitely out there struggling before August, but you see a, a kid trying to make an honest dollar. He comes to your door. He's like, hey. We'll pick up your trash for five dollars. Like, oh, look at that kid. I respect that kid. I don't want to tell that kid no. Especially when I don't. I also don't want to do the thing that he's asking me to pay him for. Sure, kid. I'll give you five dollars. Knock yourself out. Grabbing the snow on the window and mixing it with Kool Aid. Yo. Oh, you came to Chicago. I'm, I was I was born in Chicago. My family's from Chicago, but we moved to Wisconsin. I'm very familiar with Chicago. My mom's side moved to uh, to Wisconsin. My dad's side still lives in Chicago. Oh yeah, on the west coast, um, I don't know what it's called, it's, it was called panhandling, I think. But on the west coast, that's really big, people are just outside. The west coast and then New York, where people are outside just doing stuff for money. Especially like the, the major cities like Vegas and LA. That's a really big thing on the west coast, it's just really expensive to live out there. And it's one of the places 
in America where you can be homeless and your quality of life is still significantly better than a lot of uh, underdeveloped countries. But that's just another way to burn your pockets, especially as a tourist, though. I was in Vegas earlier this year, just blowing money on the, uh, the downtown Vegas Strip, bro. Oh, my God. What a disgusting place to spend money. What a disgusting way to... I mean, it's America, but... Just disgusting way to just splurge, bro. That money was just burning. Vegas is so expensive. Leviathan Cracker. Leviathan is inside of that ocean map. What is that? Cornbread work for a municipality. And I mean, yeah, it's it's a cool lifestyle, but it definitely comes with its, its cons. Like I'm tw I'm at work 24 seven. I live at work so I can be bothered at any time. That's one thing. And then I really have to address issues in the house with 100 plus people that live in the building and what well, we call them houses, but it's, it's, it's considered a dorm. I'm always at work, bro. Which is also why I try to stream really late, just so I can uh, get into the hour, the hour time frame where I can get the least um, problems or least distractions. But like, I don't know if I'll be this actively or this active streaming come mid January once everybody comes back from winter break. Like right now it's finals week. A lot of guys have already left. More guys are leaving. And it's just it's gonna get quieter and quieter from this point on. But when I come back from winter break though, that's when the activity increases, so I may not even be able to stream like that. Cause it already feels really convenient when I have to get up in the middle of the stream to go do something in the building. A city job. How long have you lived in the U.S.? Well, honestly, so believe it or not, even though you consider your family to be recluse, it's <laughs> the irony, irony of that is that I don't think most Americans actually travel in, within America. Like, there's a... It, it's trending more so now because of social media. Social media has widening widen and broadening people's perspectives of the world and just the fact that life exists outside of their hometown in general but in America for you to say that your family's recluse a lot of families in America and a lot of people like I have a lot of relatives a lot of relatives and I just know a lot of people from like my hometown who just have never left my hometown they just they stay there and some of them have stepped out for the first time recently in adulthood. I was very fortunate. Like my mom, my mom's mom. So my grandma used to be a, she used to be a flight attendant. So my mom was lucky enough to be raised by somebody who had access to free flights. So she, as a kid, my grandma would take my mom to places. So my mom got exposure to other places at an early age. And so when she had us, I think she felt that natural uh, need to also take us places. So when I was a kid, I traveled within the, the country a lot. Like I, I went to Disney World and stuff like that. Not really when I was a young kid. As I got older, my mom started getting more money. But we started going like Disney World and uh, going on cruises and stuff like that. But most of my family and most people I know from my hometown did not have that luxury or even have that that perspective in fact most people from my hometowns are kind of afraid to leave and that's both my hometowns chicago and milwaukee wisconsin it's, it's like all the people there who live on certain parts of town 
in their head the, the concept of leaving town for anything other than like a family reunion or some really special occasion where the entire family's doing it in their head they're like no i gotta stay here i gotta live in this city like this is where uh, where life is limited to but me i could go live anywhere i can i can move to korea right now if i had the resources to do so i do not care So honestly, being from the Netherlands, my whole point with that was like being from the Netherlands and then the fact that you came here from and you, you came here to Chicago and you already say you live in Arizona. That's actually a pretty big leap. That's a couple of big leaps. Your family's already way more well traveled than most people in America, I say. That's crazy to have a university opportunity outside of your country. Well, outside of your continent. Forget country. That's insane. Your brother is an extremely fortunate person. And you're pretty fortunate for being associated with him. That's unheard of where I'm from. Like, the neighborhoods I grew up in. That concept, the concept sounds unreal. Like, the closest thing to that that would be believable to people would be like, Oh, uh, so my brother or cousin wants to play basketball overseas. Or they, um, he became famous, which is not, which is absolutely rare, but it'd be believable. He became famous, and so now he's famous, now he travels. But to just go to school in another continent, unheard of. No one in my family's ever done that. I'm also a first generation college student. So even going, even what I did, where I went to school outside of my state, that was also ludicrous to my everyone I knew. They they honestly had no idea what I was doing. It was insane. People didn't believe it was it was possible. People from my high school, especially. Oh, from Chicago to Arizona. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, that's crazy. Move from the Netherlands. Wait, so your family, why did your family move from the Netherlands to the U.S., though? If not for your brother. Even your whole family moving from Chicago to Arizona is pretty big. My, my family did the same thing, though. But my only my immediate family. My mom and my, my sister. So when I came uh, down to Georgia for school, after I graduated, I stayed down here. And then my, my mom and my sister moved down here. Like all my cousins and family members on my mom and dad's side, for the most part, still live in Milwaukee or Chicago. And there were a couple that already lived in the South before before we came down here, but they were here on a completely different agenda. It's getting very expensive though. I actually plan to move out west eventually. I want to work here for a couple years to save up some money. Once I save up enough money, I want to go out west. Like Colorado. Colorado, Arizona, or Nevada. Somewhere where it's less humid. Um, but also less crowded. So I can not stop worrying about like just the, the city life to some extent. Kind of tired of living in the city. But the city has benefits when it comes to meeting people. Yeah, I need to get me a... I w really wish I had got a degree in computer science. I really wish I listened to all the people that kept saying... Uh, 
computer science and, and tech is the future, then I probably would already have some really good tech job that I do remotely since the pandemic started. And I probably would have moved outside of Georgia by now because I've saved up so much money from my extremely high paying tech job. Five boys, one girl. Wait, your mom, your mom moved five boys and one girl from the Netherlands to the U.S. That's a lot. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, Cornbread, I'm going to let you know right now, you should not fall for the Atlanta trap. Do not fall for the, let me go to it. Let me move to Atlanta to find my wife's trap. Ironically, I would only recommend you do that if you're like in your forties. Like if you have, if you have, if you really have money, like you got some good money on you, bro. But for like young, you do not want to move to Atlanta or the Georgia area. Probably like just general Georgia, sure, but it's going to be harder for, for like the in the areas with less population. But you should not move to Atlanta for a new life. Please don't do that. That is a, that is a trap. There, you would not find your wife here between the ages of twenty. And is it possible? Shit, yeah, anything is possible. But I'm telling you, you would not find your wife here between the ages of twenty and probably like thirty-five. Yeah, bro. No, 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 no. Before I got this job and I was at my leasing, I was at my apartment complex. I was speaking with my leasing, the leasing lady. I don't know what her job's title is, but she's the leasing lady. She's 35. And we had such a great conversation about uh, how uncommitted or how, how uninterested she is in committing to anyone and, and how much she loves the club life. How, 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 like, and, and that's a like very common mindset. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, the club life in this area is so alluring. And it, it seems so infinite that, that the idea of settling down in marriage is damn near unfathomable for a lot of the, the younger uh, women in that group that you're talking about. I honestly would recommend, if you're looking for, like, a... Uh, African population to meet somebody based off of what like my frat brothers who have graduated who already graduated college and other people I know who graduated college and have gone to where they uh, just gone to live somewhere else uh, I've heard that like the DMV area so like Washington DC you know Virginia Maryland Boston and then Texas area are probably the better areas for that <laughs> for like actually finding wholesome people but I promise you Georgia is not the best place to come for looking for wholesomeness you will look you will get ho the whole you will get the holes but not the not the sum you will not find the sum here bro <laughs> i promise you that but ironically though at the the uh, later ages right my mom is in her 40s and she actually just got married and she got married to someone she met here so but once again the person she married though he has a lot of money he has a lot of money and they're in their 40s so it's, it's a little different but i promise you though you don't want to you don't want to come here looking for looking for love and not in this city not in this town the dmv definitely bro my my frat brother he just moved out of he moved out of atlanta last year to the dmv uh, to baltimore maryland and he he says he just he's constantly meeting women out there like in the and like women who are really serious about relationships out there. And there's a there's a disparity of uh, more successful or like non-hood black dudes in the DMV area. So it's easier for him to date out there. But it's like in a, like the Atlanta area is absolutely a trap. 
Like, there's too much going on here, bro. Way too much going on here. Way too much. Moving to Atlanta would be like trying to find love in Vegas or something. The black version. Yeah, Vaso. Yeah, Vaso's right on the head with that. That late millennial to Zoomer thing. But the thing is, though, I, I'm not... I, I try not to generalize too much because there definitely are good groups of people. You just have to be in the right areas. Like, it's, it's, it's really cultural. Like, cultures... The, the Some of those toxic cultures are literally in specific cities. And they're, they're promoted in those cities because of the lifestyle. Like, specifically in Atlanta. Atlanta is a very club life one night stand um gold digger a fast lifestyle right like people want to move fast here people people are addicted to how fast things are i know so many girls in atlanta who just go out to the club on the weekend and they, they bring no money and there's always guys that they'll just talk to they'll just spend money they'll just spend all their money on them they'll just do every whatever they want just because that's what people what dudes do here but also because a lot of the money dudes are, are making is illegal so they're just they're, they're willing to spend that money right it's a lot of people selling drugs a lot of people um scamming or just stealing money so it, it's just it's a toxic place bro but there are there are definitely wholesome areas in the country My only problem with the DMV is that it's cold up there. I'm, I don't want to go anywhere in my life where it's cold ever again. That's why I want to save up money and go west. Because I, I like the people I've met out in the west, their personalities uh, mesh with mine a lot better. I have an easier time talking to them, like their ability to have conversation and just their in general openness in the, how they engage people in the western part of the country. Oh, you like the code? Oh, definitely go to the DMV. You, you would score heavily. You would score very hard. Life will be a, a plentiful and bountiful out there in the DMV for you. You will reap all of the benefits of your uh, computer science lifestyle. Moving to America for money and love. Now I'm not some kind of ex expert on every on all those kind of topics, but you definitely can still make money in America. You can you can get rich in America so quick, bro. There's always some new way to make money. Money just pops up in this country, bro. I've been I've had money and been broke over and over again so many times. Just at the age of 25, it is insane. There are just so many ways to make money in America, bro. I definitely will say though, most of those periods did were periods of time where I stopped gaming. Like I, I had to put down the games for a while to get into some of those periods multiple, multiple times. Like even to get where I am right now, I had to stop gaming for like six months straight. From when I stopped streaming in March until now. Well, until like a couple weeks ago or a month ago so I was I was in a better position about a month or so ago I just didn't have a internet set up in this building yeah Vezo I see what you're saying it's definitely a lot of a lot of Dramatic cultural changes throughout the country. But because of the internet, though, things are starting to fuse. Like, people are becoming the same in so many ways. Thanks to social media. Not even the internet. Social media specifically. It's because of trends. Things that become trendy. Even from, like, looks. People, the way people dress and look is becoming more uniform especially when it comes to like uh women's hairstyles and, uh, and makeup and whatnot 
in like men's hairstyles in terms of uh, getting clean cuts or wearing wilder styles like dreadlocks it's more consistent like people are starting to just trend towards or, or move towards whatever is the the trendy trendy thing but the trendy thing is becoming more universal day by day because back in milwaukee there are people people i know back in milwaukee who never uh, affiliated or associated with certain uh, styles or music or cultures and then because of social media they become more aware of things like where i am now in georgia there are things i didn't know existed in terms of uh like culturally but then i remember i'd go back home when i was in college and people back home would be unaware of the things that i learned down here in georgia like the norms of georgia but now as time is passing and social media is become, becoming more and more prominent those cultures are starting to like mix like the people back home are more aware of certain things because of like the emerging age of uh, videos and whatnot on social media Another a good way to see that too, Vaso, with the whole like differences between states, is just how drastically different some of the sounds of music are from different cities and states, like within the same genre. So, for example, like hip hop specifically, uh, and rap, uh, an Atlanta rapper is much different from a Florida rapper or a New York rapper or um, a Chicago or Detroit rapper. Like Detroit rappers really stand out. California rappers really stand out the way they sound. Um, and then I'm sure in other genres of music that I'm not as familiar with, you can see some of those same distinctions. Outside of like pop, seems like pop is just becoming a universal sound. Really? In the Netherlands, people were absorbed by American culture? That's insane. That's kind of sick. Why? Why is that? <laughs> Well, that's kind of, that's crazy. Damn, these quests are taking forever. I think they just reset too. It's 1041. Oh, no, they're going to reset in 10 minutes no, or 19 minutes. Magic crystal. Burning City, White Coal Cave, or whatever. God will see. Oh, I don't need to do that quest. Oh, that's all I got left. I gotta go to White Coal Canyon and Burning City. White Coal Canyon is Jewel Forest. Uh, burning ends today, but there should be another one starting tomorrow. Yeah. And if it's not tomorrow, I'll probably be the, the patch two weeks from now. They give you quests that make you level up really fast. And they give you free gear based off of completing quests uh, that's partially upgraded. And a bunch of other um, free items that help you with progress. Yeah, champion stats are permanent. They're account wide and permanent.
Yeah, you should work on them sooner than later, since they're time gated. In theory, if you don't have any champion boosting um, resources, which is like the champion pet or champion reset books, I believe it takes like 360 days exactly if you do champs every single day to max them out. Like it takes like an ex an entire year, maybe more than a year if you do it every day for that entire year to max them all out. And that's with no re additional resources. Summon skills, yeah, summon stats and summon skills are only active when you have the summon out. Seventy-two hour EXP Elite events. There are, there is a weekend buff. Pretty much every weekend, this event button up on the map turns green, and if you hover over it, it'll tell you what the weekend buff is for that weekend. And more than likely, though, there should be a buff that should turn on immediately tomorrow with the update, especially since they delayed it. Usually, at some form of compensation. Yeah, you should focus on Luna, uh, Unia and Beatrice. You should focus on... Well, actually, there's a couple things you could do. First, you should max out your Rich Ring completely. And then, after that... If you want to do the Damage Boost Glitch, which is... Where you max out Potion of Madness, you take out Lustro in the beginning of a dungeon. I can show you actually how it looks. You take out Lustro in the beginning of a dungeon. You'll attack with Lustro until he gives you the buff. And then you'll attack with a summon. And hope that it gives you a buff. You know you get the buff when the big line pops up over your character. That's And then you get the buff clearly in the bar. And then you open up one of your pets. And now this pet has the stats that you had at the moment when you summoned it. And with Lustro... Uh, that'd be if you want if you go this route if you want to play like that i actually should have never done this because i'd never do this glitch but you get the dual crit damage and the crit rate on your summon as well as the buff from champions um which is it whatever the hell this champion buff does when you have it like doubles the stats or something like that and then your summon has that damage and it turns off once you leave the dungeon that you're in but so if you don't want to go that route then after you buff out once you max out rich ring then just go to all your summons and max out their passive stats first max out all the passive stats on unia or beatrice whichever one you prefer unia if you want to be tankier beatrice if you want to just be a stronger uh, ignoring the minimum damage and then after you max out all the passives probably max out all the passives on all of them besides less rule max the passives out because when union and beatrice are down you want to use the eraser and and cardian and now that you have access to summons and since you're free to play or and you're and just in general if you're not very funded you probably want to play with a summon at all times so you want to just max out all their passives so they at least give you some bonus stats when you play the game and then after you're done maxing out all their passives, then you go back down to Unia or Beatrice, whichever one you prefer, and start maxing out the skills. And as you can see, I'm not even done with the skills yet. And then from there, probably Eraser, then Cardian. Where do I gotta go next? Where do I gotta go next? I gotta go to Burning City. A mix of Assassin and Shadower.
so unfortunate that the best time to stream as a a growing streamer is late at night but I'm also a responsible adult or at least trying to be so I go to sleep <laughs> around this time I start to feel sick when I go to sleep really late and I wake up in the morning it feels really hard to get out the bed it's already hard to get out the bed even when I get a good night's sleep but it feels incredibly hard to get out the bed and then like I feel like a burning sensation throughout my body for the rest of the day that shit feels terrible so I definitely like to get my sleep these days just because the risk reward is ratio is uh it's a little too big it's like stay up all night enjoy the night go to sleep on time oh wait stay up all night and enjoy the night and have a terrible next day or go to sleep on time and have a good day but miss out on the perks of staying up all night Yeah, this game is tiring. You do have to build, like, damn near building a muscle to play this game for long hours. Especially when you get into those higher levels because of how much effort it takes to kill monsters. This game is very tiring. I hear you on that, my brother. But I, too, am actually done for the day. Let's see here. Tart cherry juice. Look at all these players wishing they had, wishing they were able to uh, play the game, oh, update it, or have, wishing they could have got the update today. All these players with no update. Tough. Breaking up pretty fast. I want to be top 50 level cap, but most of these people are not going to level up, so I definitely should be able to do it. Most death. A lot of people are going to start leveling up again after the update, though. At least, probably not intentionally, but as a result of doing the dungeon over and over again. What the update will do for you it will more than likely have system changes that will affect all players so you can look forward to that and if what the people who went on the discord say is true there should be a rebalance update tomorrow as well and rebalance updates always uh, well for the most part will rebalance at least 90 percent of the classes like everything will get at least one change but tomorrow i know well the upcoming rebalance update whether it's tomorrow or not I know for a fact has significant changes for every class because they're changing the way dashes work in the game so all the classes dashes are going to be different and then on top of that they're adding some a lot of classes are getting buff a lot of weaker classes i'm not sure if the, these changes are all pre-awakening though that's one thing but for the most part there should be some changes for everybody regardless and then there should be another burning event, so that should help you out a lot as well. Free stuff. And then... 
there's some other system changes that I, I don't remember. I need to watch Spy Family myself. I'm like on episode six of the first season. But I'm gonna watch um The Eminence in the Shadow tonight before I go to sleep. That's my that's my current one of my current favorite shows this season. That shit is funny, bro. Well, upcoming the the next balance update is a new dash. I can't guarantee it's tomorrow because in Korea they didn't get it on the same day as the Weapon Dungeon. But somebody came on the stream and said that the GM said we we will be getting the balance patch with the new Weapon Dungeon. So if that is coming with the Weapon Dungeon, then yes, the dash update should be tomorrow. Yeah, the Eminence in Shadow. Eminence, Eminence in Shadow. That shit's funny, bro. It's a it's an isekai anime. But the entire time, he's making fun of the fact that it's an isekai anime. But the very first episode is definitely a little misleading. I highly recommend watching watching at least the second episode to get the show a try. Don't don't base it off the first, because the very first episode is nothing like the rest of the other episodes. I'm not sure why the first one was like that. Um, the hype for most players, which is in gamers is the new weapon dungeon and the fact that the current in game weapon dungeon will be easily accessible in terms of the the monsters damage and hp will be nerfed and then upgrading the weapons will be considerably easier so that's hype because everyone's going to become stronger faster as a result of that and then the um the there's a couple min miniatures mini system changes like getting title books easier i'm not sure if that's tomorrow's update but i could have sworn when i looked on the the korean website i mean bro i could stop sitting here talking about it and just go to the website right now let me go let me go over to the little tail website bro let's go see what we're getting tomorrow bro instead so we can stop speculating and then i can call it a night from there all right let me get off this game let's get off this game Actually, it's all F4. Okay, let's go to the Lissell website, bro. Let's stop speculating. All right. They got this in... I update. So this is this is we are 100% getting everything on this page tomorrow. But based off of what people said uh who have been talking to GMs on GMs on the um GMs in the uh on the Discord, we are also getting a class rebalance update tomorrow as well. Which is this update. That doesn't make sense to me that we get this update tomorrow, though. Just because Gatekeeper came out. Yeah, Gatekeeper, but Gatekeeper isn't getting rebalanced. So I guess maybe that does make sense. Gatekeeper isn't on this page at all. So maybe, okay. Okay, so this is everything we're 100% getting tomorrow. We're getting... Can't see. Oh, nobody said anything. Okay. I update. All right, so we're getting... I'm supposed to go over this stuff tomorrow on the stream, bro. Um, New weapon. Yeah, new weapon. I'm not going to go over all the specifics, so I can go over it later. They're adding job only sub scenarios for Dark Chaser. Dark Chaser has three exclusive scenarios. Cool. And now all the RG stuff is easier to upgrade as well as the other badges and whatnot. Oh, so they're making it easier to upgrade the Sky Kali badge, Minerva badge, and the Aurora Garden badge. So that's pretty good. Um, 
they're changing the way Magic Rod, the Lance, and the Agni, so upgrade. So those three classes, Demigod, um, whatever the hell that Lancer is called, Dark Shadow, or whatever the hell that thing's called. What is it called? Death Knight? Uh, Dark Ch Chaser? It's not Dark Chaser. What is that the Lance called? And then Agni. Those are becoming easier to upgrade. The amount of Shadow Walker. Shadow Walker. Okay. Oh, yo, yo, everybody, yo, 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 pay some, pay and show some respect, bro. There's a God in the chat. We got a little tell God in the chat. Daily quests of instant dungeons have been transcended. Level change. We already had this update. This came with Numa for us. They gave us was early. They're changing the some dungeon titles can be exchanged for silver and golden. They're also making it so you can get titles with the peppers, which is really good. That's how that one end gamer has all almost all the title books. So honestly, a lot of people are about to get really strong over this next month. We're about to get really, really, really strong. We're probably going to be seeing 20 bills like it's nothing. 20 bill damage. Dungeon monster clarification has been subdivided according to trans transcendence level. They, they cleaned up the illustration book. They added a new guild exchange item. A guild goods ticket and 100 guild coins can be exchanged for one guild goods box. What's one of what's in there? All right, Cornbread. Have a good night, bro. They have a completely new reputation system being added. Okay. It's not that much, honestly. Balance, Agony's Giants, Slayer Skill, Cash Out. It's a, it's a handful of things but that's if we're only getting this stuff now based off of what the folks said that went to the discord we also should be getting all these balance changes to every class so a lot of stuff on here that I'm not going to read but look at those long balance changes besides for sword savior look at all those balance changes Sefi, Archmage Popstar, Windstalker, Common, Windstalker, Dagger, Bow, Crossbow, DF, Engineer, Swordian, Soulless One, Arcmaster, Horsemaster, Black Anima, Black Anima Sword, Black Anima Lamp, Demigod, Oh, they did a lot to Demigod. Hey, yo, Demigod might be strong. Hold up. Probably not. Agni. Dark Chaser. Damn, they made Dark Chaser buff again. That's a crazy Dark Chaser buff, looks like. Shadow Walker. Uh, Pathfinder. Oh, they did change Pathfinder on here. Yeah, that's why I feel like we're not gonna get we're not gonna get this balance update tomorrow, bro. Cause they Pathfinder is on here, bro. Highlander. Sword Dancer. Terror Knight. Psychic. Phantom Mage. Maestro. Logmaster. That's Rogue Master. Judgment. Pop Star. Is that Star Seeker? Jewel Star. Windia. Holy shit. Rania. Yeah. So, I actually only went to this page for Cornbread and he left. So, yeah, everybody should experience some kind of change in their game gameplay tomorrow, regardless. All right, yo, it's your boy, Lemurs, Lamars. It's been a great night. It's a little earlier, thank God, though. I need to get some rest. But thanks for hanging out with the boy, the man, the kid, the guy. I'll see you all tomorrow, more than likely. And probably play some other random game while waiting for the game to get patched. And then I'll probably stay up for, probably, I'll probably stay up to 1 o'clock tomorrow night just so I can play the new dungeon on stream.
and probably because everybody else will be up just for the hype factor i'll do it i'll do it for the for the content but i'm gonna call it a night appreciate y'all man have a good one be on for the gamble session oh yeah we're gonna spectate grinding's gamble session the gamble session of the gods you don't even know what's in the you don't even know what the box is yet bro how are you already planning to gamble? That's insane. But all right, yo. Peace. It's your boy, Lamars. I'm out. Deuces. I haven't used this to be continued screen in so long. I forgot it was there. <laughs>